my name is Eduise and Rafilwe will be joining me today. Hi Rafilwe. Hi again. What do you have planned for today? Today we are going to be using a new formula called the midpoint formula. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to calculate the midpoint of any line segment. If you remember in the last lesson, we practiced using the distance formula. Yeah, I've been practicing. And the more I practice, the easier it gets. I'm glad to hear that. Don't forget though, there is more to this than just being able to do it quickly. You have to be accurate too. Does it really make such a difference if I'm a little bit out? Yes, it does. Can you imagine if your doctor was operating on your eye and he wasn't quite precise? Ow, that sounds sore. Just thinking about it freaks me out. Yes, it does seem a bit painful, but people are having their eyesight corrected every day using laser surgery. Wow, that's amazing. But how amazing would it be if the technology wasn't accurate? Would you trust it then? Probably not. So, it's sometimes very important to be correct. And sometimes trying hard isn't good enough. You must get it right. Yeah, I see what you mean. Okay, now I think it's time to get started on learning about midpoints. The best place to start is with a circle. We are going to use this one. The diameter AB is the line segment from A to B. The coordinates of A are 1, 6. And the coordinates of B are 11, 6. We need to work out what the coordinates of the midpoint of the line segment AB are. But what's a midpoint? The midpoint of a line is the halfway mark. Oh, so in other words, a midpoint is a specific point. Yes, and if we were to call the midpoint M, we would need to know the X and Y coordinates of the point M. I get it. Because it's a midpoint, it has to have its own coordinates. That's right. Okay, let's tackle this problem. The line AB is parallel to the x-axis and the length of the segment AB is 10 units. The midpoint would be halfway, so it is 5 units from point A or 5 units back from point B. The x value would be 6. The y coordinate of all the points on AB is the same because it is parallel to the x axis and that y value is 6. So the coordinates of the midpoint of the circle or the point M are 6, 6. That was a lot easier than I thought. So all we have to do to find the midpoint of the line segment is to half the distance between the x values of the two endpoints. Almost. This only works if the line is parallel to the x-axis and unfortunately many lines will not be parallel to an axis. So we need to find a way to find the coordinates of the midpoint, no matter where the line is. That's right Rafilwe. Now we are going to need an average. Rafilwe, do you know what an average is? No, not really. I mean I've heard of it, but I'm not quite sure what it is. Let me explain with an example. If you had 40 rand and your friend had 80 rand, what is the total amount of money you have between you? To get the average, you have to find the total and divide it by the number of people there are. So 40 rand plus 80 rand gives you a total money of 120 rand. Now, there are two people, so you divide the 120 by 2 and find the average, which is 60. Now, let's go back to our points on the line segment. The x value of A is 1 and the x value of B is 11. If you add them together and divide by 2, we get the average x value, which is 6. Now, if we look at the diagram, the x-coordinate of the midpoint is halfway from the first x-value to the second x-value, at x equal to 6. So the x-value of the midpoint is the average of the x-values of the endpoints. Now the y-values. If we take the average of the y-values, it will be 6 plus 6, and that answer divided by 2 is 6. Now, what is this midpoint that we have found? 
Did you see that the midpoint of the diameter is actually the center of the circle? So if I rotate the diameter like this, would the center move? Do you notice that the center of the circle stays where it is? Since the midpoint of the diameter is the center, the midpoint also stays the same. Let's choose new points C and D on the circle. Let the coordinates of C be X1 and Y1, and the coordinates of D be X2 and Y2. If we trace lines to the y-axis from C, D and the midpoint and mark the y-axis with Y2 and Y1, you can see the lines we traced back to the y-axis are parallel. The y-coordinate of the midpoint will be halfway between Y2 and Y1. That means that the y-coordinate is the average of the y-values. Similarly, the x-coordinate of the midpoint is halfway between x1 and x2. So to get the x-coordinate, you take the average of the x-values. That means that the midpoint's coordinates are just the average of the x-values and the average of the y-values. The average of the x-values is x1 plus x2 all divided by 2. The average of the y values is y1 plus y2 all divided by 2. So the coordinates of the midpoint are x1 plus x2 all divided by 2 for the x coordinate and y1 plus y2 all divided by 2 for the y coordinate. Let me pick two more points which are on the circle. Point P, which is 3, 2, and Q, which is 9, 10. The line PQ is also a diameter and therefore the center of the circle is also its midpoint. The average of the X values is X1 plus X2 divided by 2, which is 3 plus 9 and then divide that by 2 to get the average x value, which is 12 divided by 2, which is 6. The average of the y values is y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So we take 2 plus 10, which is 12 divided by 2, which is 6. So the answer I get is the point with an x value of 6 and a y value of 6. We must be careful to write the answer down as a pair of coordinates. The midpoint of the diameter from point P, 3, 2, to Q, 9, 10, is 6, 6. When we move the diameter, the center stayed fixed, so I'm not surprised that the midpoint has stayed the same. You can check that this works by drawing any diameter of the circle, reading off the x and y values, and testing the formula. We already know that the midpoint will be the center of the circle, which is 6, 6. Now we are ready to try this formula out on any two points in the Cartesian plane, whether they are on a circle or not. Okay, now it's your turn, Rafilwe. I want you to choose two points and then find the midpoint. All right, I'm going to choose negative 3, 4. and 7, negative 1. I'll label my points with x1, y1, x2, y2. And I'm going to highlight each one with a different color so that I can see which is which. Now I write down the formula. The coordinates of the midpoints are x1 plus x2 all divided by 2 y1 plus y2 all divided by 2. Then I 
substitute into the formula. So, x1 is negative 3 and x2 is 7. And y1 is 4 and y2 is negative 1. Now what I do is work out each part and I get 4 divided by 2 for the x coordinate. So that's 2. And 3 divided by 2, which is 1 and a half. So the midpoint of a line segment joining the two points I chose is 2 and 3 divided by 2, which I can write as 2, 1 and a half. And if you put the points on the line, you can check if your answer is reasonable. Yes, on the line you can see that this is a midpoint. Well done. I'm impressed that you are working so well with the formula. Thanks. Before we get to our task, let's go over what we have done today. We started today by looking at a diameter in a circle. The diameter was parallel to the x-axis, so we were able to read off the coordinates of the midpoint from the diagram. We then rotated the diameter and found that we needed another way to find the midpoint. But we found that the midpoint could be found by taking the average of the x values and the average of the y values. We called the x values x1 and x2 and we called the y values y1 and y2. So we can now find the midpoint whenever it is needed by using the formula x1 plus x2 all divided by 2, y1 plus y2 all divided by 2. And now for the task. If negative 5, 6 and 10, 4 are the endpoints of a diameter, find the coordinates of the center and calculate the radius. Thanks for watching the lesson. We will see you next time where we will be exploring gradients. Rafilwe is just recording the latest formula in her book, so I'll say goodbye from both of us. See you next time.